be careful not to get into an endless cycle of impulse buying. You have to free yourself from this psychological conditioning of consumerism. You can create the perfect wardrobe without spending more than you should, and then you can respect your financial goals. For this, you have to be aware of the forces of marketing and the social media influencers. Attention! Influencers are basically salespeople paid by brands to generate sales. Money Arata Have you ever felt trapped in a cycle of debt and financial stability because of a wardrobe? Do you feel anxious that you need to be buying more and more items? Do you feel inadequate when you have to be repeating the same clothes? Now pay attention to all those emotions. Even worse is when you follow an influencer really closely and every time that they are showing something new to you, you feel like you need to buy. It is very easy to feel that you need to be competing with these lifestyles of all these people, idealized lifestyles that you see on social media, in movies, on TV, but that can cause problems in your finances. It can be difficult to get out of a cycle that has consumerism on the one side and financial limitation on the other. But there are practical solutions for you to create a wardrobe of quality and timeless pieces that will save you money in the long term and also help you to achieve financial success. You no longer need to sacrifice your style or sacrifice your bank account as long as you first understand the psychology of consumerism and money. Now notice that this is not financial advice. Please read the full disclaimer before proceeding. The first step is to recognize that you are vulnerable to marketing influences. After that, you can change. We're bombarded with marketing messages, and that is not by chance. There's a whole science to getting you to spend more money. In the Arata Academy summary of the book Brave New World, we talked about how, with the rise of mass production, the companies quickly realized that they needed to stimulate mass consumption. In other words, our consumerist behavior is not by chance, by mere coincidence. It is the result of an engineering that intentionally conditioned us to spend, spend, spend. Edward Bernays, the father of public relations, was hired by big corporations for mass persuasion. The goal was to convince people that they needed to express their identities through clothes and other products. Since then, the science of marketing has evolved and became increasingly aggressive. The psychology of consumption is very powerful. You may not even realize that you've been influenced, but it is natural to feel compelled to be buying all the time. These marketing messages build and amplify our natural tendency to compare ourselves with other people. We explain all of this in detail with exercises that you can do in our money psychology training at arata.se forward slash money taboo. But here is a simplified version that you can do right now for some activity. A first step that is very effective in therapy programs is recognizing your weaknesses. This also applies here. You need to admit that you are vulnerable to marketing messages. After that, it will be easier to make conscious choices. So use to your advantage the knowledge of how marketing messages work. Start paying attention to how you feel when you see something being advertised and be aware of how your decisions are being influenced by that. Now remember, although you may be vulnerable to marketing messages, you are still in control of your spending. Social media influencers are not friends that you should admire. They are salespeople. It is easy to become interested in the lives of social media influencers, but it is very important to remember that they are being paid by brands to promote those products and then generate sales. You can think of it this way. You know when you're watching a YouTube video, then there is this interruption ad that pops in your face, You get annoyed waiting for those seconds, those five seconds to finally be able to click skip ad. Well, that ad that you're ignoring is trying to sell you something, but the influencer is exactly the same. Maybe it's a little bit more charming and gives you the impression of being your friend, but it's still an ad. When we think of influencers as salespeople, 
we no longer look at them as aspirational figures. It is very useful to do that, to start viewing influencers as ads. In this way, we understand that their content, their posts, are sponsored. Their lifestyles are funded by brands. We realize that it is not all glamorous as it might seem. The influencer has become the most powerful representative of consumer psychology. This role works so well that companies today spend more money on influencers than on traditional ads. Influencers are relatable. They increase sales by manipulating the minds of their followers. And we can use this new perspective to reframe, to reformulate how we look at influencers. Instead of focusing only on what they're wearing, we can start to consider, hmm, how are they making money here? In this way, we can try to identify whether there is some product placement, when there is a sponsored content. Being aware of the relationships between influencers and brands and consumers, we can see the influencers in a different light. We can create a more meaningful connection with them. This will change our mindset and this will be incredibly powerful and beneficial because you will choose better who to follow, who to support, who is aligned with your personal values. So the next time you are scrolling through that app that is full of flashy photos, remember to look beyond the statics. Ask yourself, well, what is the business model? Who's paying for this? What is this salesperson trying to sell me? Make a plan and visualize your ideal wardrobe. Your purchases will be more conscious and will bring you greater joy. Have you ever felt trapped in a never-ending cycle of buying something on impulse and then regretting it? Well, impulse buying can be a trap. That is why it is so important for you to make a planned and conscious decision when you're creating your wardrobe. Take a look at the clothes that you need. Define what is that you really need. How many jeans and shirts and shoes and accessories. Visualize the minimum that you need. Things that can last for a few years that are not, not going to become repetitive or outdated quickly. Instead of buying many cheap items that won't really bring you joy, you have to focus on a plan to acquire the wardrobe of your dreams, even if it will take you a year or more. Prioritize what you're going to be buying first, what's going to be the next purchase. This will help you to spread your purchases and also stay within your budget. You might even become more inspired to work more, save more, or find even additional sources of income. The key here is to not buy on impulse. Planning and prioritizing will help you to make smarter decisions and make and save money in the long run. This is the best way to create your ideal wardrobe. But beware of consumer psychology. When we constantly compare our clothes to others, it is natural to feel the need to acquire more and more items to have a better wardrobe. And this can hinder your financial freedom. In our financial enrichment training, we'll perform interactive activities to protect ourselves from the influence of marketing and also make wise decisions about our purchase. Mainly, we're going to be learning how to make plans to increase our sources of income and make better and more intelligent investments. To get started, you can go to arata.se forward slash money taboo.